Amen. Welcome to the Teenager Sunday School class. There is no one who is insignificant in the purpose of God, according to Alistair Begg. My name is Tim Dupa David, and I want to welcome you to the Teen Sunday School class. I remain your host, Tim Dr. David. At today's topic is titled My Place. It's titled My Place. If you missed last week's Sunday School, do not worry. You can watch it back on our YouTube channel. You can watch it back on our YouTube channel. I'm also going to leave the link in the comment section so that you can just go right there, follow us and actually also send this to somebody and bless somebody. Sow this at a, as a seed in somebody's life. Our text today is going to be taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17. God has got you there. You know, God has got you here. For something God has got you here there's a reason why God has got you here God has a purpose for your life now you have to step up you have to take your place a memory verse is going to be taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 and it says and whatsoever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today in Jesus' name. Our relevant word for this, the teenager's class is mercy, kind-hearted, and humility. Mercy, kind-hearted, and humility. Once again, I would like you to please sow this video as a seed to someone's life by sharing the video. It is also an evangelical gesture when you share it to somebody it will bless somebody's life and their life will never remain the same as you do so may the lord bless you in jesus name we have three outline we have three outline for the sunday school today the first one is who are the elect of god who are the elect of god the second is things to put on things to put on and the third is functioning as one body functioning as one body as many have given their life to jesus christ automatically have their place and position among the elect of god each of us has each of us has been uniquely packaged and strategically positioned in the body of christ to contribute our quota to advance in the course of the kingdom you are to set your affections on bringing his will and kingdom realities to bear on earth. Colossians chapter 3 verse 3 says that you are dead to sin in wilderness and now your life is hidden in Christ Jesus, which is actually our current position in Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 to 17. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 to 17. It says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of affection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And wherever and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father 
through him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. The first outline, which is, are you God elect? Pardon me. Who are God elect? The first outline is, who are God elect? The first question will be, are you born again? That is, have you at any time asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart? If yes, then you are an elect of God. The congregation of those who have accepted that the atoning sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary was for them and have repented of their sins are the elect of God. The elect are the chosen one, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, which says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. This verse gives us a few characteristics of the elects of God. The first one is they are those who have been called into the in, in, called out of darkness into God's marvelous light, living in, in in living sin and darkness. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. The elect are those who in time past have alienated from God, but who have now brought near to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Another one is the elect are people who are, you know, either to obtain mercy, but now, you know, they now have obtained mercy in Christ. And the mercy they have obtained is continually in joy in his provision. This reference is taken from the book of Hebrews chapters 4 verse 16. The elect are people who see and understand their status as strangers in this world and live their life in anticipation of home going someday. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 14 to 15, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. If you have, if you have time, I would like you to go through the pages of the Bible and pause this video and search your scriptures. The other outline is things to put on. Things to put on according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15. Every member of the elect of God is known by the fruit, by, by, by his or her fruit. It's the sort of fruit they produce. And one of the fruits that we are expected to produce as elect are, you know, having mercy, having bowels of mercy, being kind-hearted, having kind-heartedness, humility of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance, um, forgiveness, and forgiving spirit and putting on love. These are the things that we are expected to put on as the elect of God. Having bow, having mercy, having the bowel of mercy, being able to show people mercy, people mercy, compassion, having kind heartedness, being kind heartedness is being able to exhibit kindness towards your, towards a fellow human being putting on in humility, humility of mind, not being proud, not being, you know, not being proud, not putting on, not putting on a mask of who you're not, being real, meekness, being calm, long suffering, forbearance, forbearance to be able to tolerate people, to be able to tolerate how people are and understand who they are and how to deal with them. Having forgiveness 
and the spirit of forgiveness, a forgiving spirit at all time, because definitely people are definitely going to step on your toes, but you have to decide. Even the Bible encourages us to forgive our neighbors. Do you know how many times? 70 times seven. So please, it's important that we have this. And most importantly, we put on love, love, they say, cover it multitude of sin. If you have the love of God in your life, you will be able to, you'll be able to move on beyond, you know, just the, just the, just the normal, um, just doing things normally. You'll be able to accommodate, you'll be able to, with love, you'll be able to oversee, you'll be able to look away from, 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 from some certain things and actually love will help you express mercy will help you express kindness love that is humble love that is that is not proud love that helps us to be who god wants us to be and expressing the love of god puts us in a place as an elect of god the other one is functioning as one body. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to, 30, to 31. All God's children, the elect of God, are called to operate together as one body. That is why it is called the body of Christ. It is God's intention for all the parts to work together as a body. However, we must know that certain considerations will make this functioning as will make this functioning as an effective as as a as an as an, as an effective body one of the things that would help us to be functioning to to be able to do this is that to understand that each part has its unique function each part in the body of Christ has its unique function. No part in the body of Christ is superior to the other. What do I, what do we mean by this? No part in the body of Christ. If you look at the, if you, if you take, for example, your body, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your hands, your feet, your legs, every part of your body is functioning together. Take, for example, the mouth, the mouth has got the tongue, it's got the, the, your, your lips, it's got your beautiful set of teeth. <laughs> so the, the, the mouth cannot say, oh, I do not need the tongue. Neither does the lips say, oh, I don't need, I do not need this, the teeth. So all of this part in your mouth function together. You chew and the tongue also helps. Imagine if you put a sandwich in your mouth. You just don't put a sandwich in your mouth and then you swallow the sandwich. No, you'd have this, there's certain things that would go, that would have to happen for you to be able to swallow the sandwich. You have to chew on the sandwich. You have to, you know, your tongue will have to help move it from one part of the mouth to the other and then help at the end of the day to swallow. So essentially the function of the mouth and the parts of the mouth are working together so the same happens in the body of Christ nobody is above each, each other and another thing is that there is no competition in the body of Christ there should be no competition uh, and if you if you would like to look at first Corinthians second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 in summary and conclusion I want you to know that your position in Christ is secured as a part of the elect and you must at all times strive to contribute your quota to ensuring that the body is cohesively forging ahead in fulfilling God's eternal uh, agenda. Whatever grace and gift that the Lord has bestowed upon you as given you is meant to bless the body of Christ. It in, in, and the way you can do, you, for for instance, if you if you are a good singer, your singing talent should glorify God, right? Your singing talent should actually glorify God. And you want to ask yourself, in what way will you contribute 
your effort in making the kingdom of God advance. So you want to search yourself at this point and say, what are my strengths? How can my strength, how can my area of strength be, um, how can my area of, of strength be a blessing in the body of Christ? If you know how to encourage people, that could be something that you do and it's something that you do well. It could be you exercising that in the body of Christ. If yours is taking care of people, helping people, you know, it could be by words, it could be by deeds. That is also something that you can do to contribute to to contribute to your efforts to advance the kingdom of God. In our discussion today, we have um, in your own word, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, if you read it in your own word, explain what it means. To be honest, all sincere Christian consider one another to be brothers. Every aspect of Every aspect and relationship of the Christian life is characterized by faithfulness. Um, I have read it and I'd like you to also read it as well and give it your own interpretation. But the three main virtues of a Christian life are faith, hope and love. These virtues are worthy of praise and appreciation. We will be more liberated to use our earthly wealth for good if we place greater emphasis on the price in the next world. The other one is in what way can you become an effective member of the body of Christ? In what way can you become an effective member of the body of Christ? And for this, you can actually read Colossians, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, let the word, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord the gospel is christ's message despite the fact that many people would have the word they know the word they can recite their memory verses sometimes it doesn't it does not make much of an impact on them when we are overflowing with the scriptures and Christ's grace, the, the soul, our soul prospers. However, we must, we must be moved by Psalms as well when we sing, when we sing them. And it's important that we carry out all our tasks in the Lord Jesus name and with a firm belief in our resilience on him. We must not just avoid hurting people or anyone, but we must try to help everyone. Those who are God's holy, cherished elect must always ought to be meek and sympathetic towards everyone. Although conflicts do occasionally occur in our society where there is, where there is so much corruption in the hearts of men, however, it is our responsibility to show one another grace by replicating the forgiveness that leads to our salvation. Let God's peace which works in all of those who are his rule in your hearts. Giving thanks to God makes us more amendable to all men. The gospel of Christ is the message. Although many people possess the term, it does not have much, it might not sometimes have much impact at them and at this point i just want to you know encourage you to just perhaps if you if you might be thinking in your heart do i even have a place if perhaps you are asking yourself do i have a place do i have a place in this body of christ that i'm talking about first i want you to know that god loves you no matter what and he cares for you it wants to give you a place in him. It wants to make you his home no matter what you've done or how you feel. God loves you. The Bible says that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And there is nothing that could that we could do that would make God love, that will make God to stop loving us or stop loving you. What I need you to do is you need to accept that love. 
you might think your mistake does not qualify you to be loved or it has cost you know it, or it, it it has cost you a lot it's actually at this point that god is actually wanting to embrace you you have the opportunity to surrender to him now god's arms are always open and i just want you to know that god wants to give you a place in his kingdom and call you one of his elect he wants you to function in his body he wants to protect and provide for you and if you're making that decision right now to embrace his love to to ask him to come into your life and transform your life i just want you to say this prayer right now and as you do so may the lord help in jesus name and i want you to say it from the depth of your heart just say dear heavenly father thank you for your love thank you for sending your son jesus christ to die for my sins jesus son of the living god i confess my sin before you i forsake them i believe that you died you were buried and you rose again on the third day for me i accept you as my lord and savior and i give my life over to you please jesus give me your spirit and thank you so much for setting me free in jesus mighty name i pray amen if you have said this prayer today i'd like you to send me a message and i want to congratulate you and welcome you personally into the fold of christ into the body of christ as christ elect and i want you to know that god loves you and i would like you to find a bible believing church around you however if you're struggling for one you can send me an email or you send me a text or a, or a dm i would be able to help you so we have come to the to the to the end of our class however we have an assignment and a take home assignment as you have just confessed this prayer in your heart and for those who have, for those of us who have accepted Christ as our lord and personal savior you have a part to play and as part of the body if you have not identified your own unique assignment within the body of Christ is now now is a time for you to set time apart this week and pray and affirm what it is and get working and as you do so may the lord bless you in jesus name We have come to the end of this class. I'd like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching us on Instagram or Facebook, please follow us. And please do sow this video as a seed in the life into the life of someone. It can actually bless someone. And as you do so, the Lord bless you in Jesus name. I remain your host Timothy David. Have a wonderful wonderful day. Take care. God bless you now. Bye.